Today, I'm gonna show you how to make custom shapes in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. In today's episode, it's all about custom shapes. We're gonna show you around the shape tool and get you familiar with all the options you need to create shapes in Photoshop. We're gonna go over some hidden features inside of the polygon tool and we're gonna show you how to create your own custom shape using a pen path. All right, and to finish today's episode off, we're gonna show you a real world example of something cool you can do with simple shapes. Cool, all right, let's get into today's episode. So we're starting off with a blank document here and the first thing we need to do when learning about the shape tool is select the shape tool. So it's right over here. You're gonna see a T for the type tool. Right down under that is your shape tool. So let's go ahead and click and hold there and you're gonna see we have a few different options here. Everything from a rectangle tool, the rounded rectangle tool, ellipse, polygon, line, and custom shape. We're gonna go over all these in this episode. So let's go ahead and start off with the rectangle tool. We're gonna to click up there and you're gonna see we have some options here on the top for our rectangle tool. Now my suggestion whenever you're using the shape tool is to go to window and down here to properties. That's gonna give you even more options when I start to create my shape. So starting off with our rectangle tool, basically I'm just gonna click and drag here on my canvas and now I've got quite a few options that I can see with this rectangle. Okay, so you see it's a rectangle. It's filled with green, which looks great, and it doesn't have a stroke. Now, this is our fill color, and here's our stroke color. Same thing over here, fill and stroke. So let's go ahead and choose our fill color. We're gonna click here, and then I'm gonna give it like a nice bright, there we go, a nice bright blue looks pretty good. Now, as of now, there is no stroke, so let's go ahead and click over here, and we're gonna go ahead, we'll give it a dark blue. Eh, you know what? I like that green, eh, I like that that I like that <laughs> all right so we can see we can choose our colors at any point in time now I can even have things like gradients if I'd like to choose a gradient stroke I can choose all black I can choose a solid color this is solid color or I can choose no stroke at all so let's go ahead and go back to our stroke all right something a little bit like a dark green now here we can choose the size of the stroke we'd like on our shape there we go. And right now you can see there's the bounding box of our rectangle and you can see the stroke is actually on the inside. So if you'd like to change where your stroke appears, you can click on this button right here and see this is our stroke on the inside. This will stroke on the center and this will stroke on the outside of your shape. So depending on what shape you're making, it's going to make a big difference on where your stroke is going to be. Okay, so we started off this shape just by clicking and dragging. Let's say I wanted a custom side. Let's say I wanted this to be exactly perfect square. Well, I'm just gonna go over here in my width and my height. I'm just gonna enter 1200 pixels as my width. There we go. 1200 pixels as my height. And now we have a perfect square that's 1200 pixels. And if you wanted to change the size later, you can change the height or the width independently. Click on that little chain link and it's gonna change them both at the same time at the same size now keep in mind if i create a new layer and i start working around and say la 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 la, la i'm so good at photoshop um and then i decided i want to change this thing that's not i'm so good at photoshop that looked horrible you can still go back to this layer and your options are still going to be available so you can change the interior stroke color to puke green at any point in time so keep in mind these are always going to be options available and that's why I really like using the shape tools because you're not set to one specific shape you're, it's not set as it is you can change it at any point in time all right let's go ahead and take a look at our next feature within the rectangle tool and this is right down here on the bottom we have our rounded corners now by default this chain link is going to be clicked which means if I drag over here and give a rounded corner all my rounded corners are going to change at the same time so you're wondering now like, well, there's a rectangle tool and a rounded rectangle tool. Well, the rounded rectangle tool actually just gives you this. So you don't really need to click on the rounded rectangle tool. You can go to your regular rectangle tool and add the, some radius to your corners. Now let's say I wanted this radius. Let's go ahead and uncheck, uncheck that little chain link. Let's say I want this radius right here to be a little bit smaller. So again, while that chain link is checked, all my radiuses are gonna be the same exact size. Uncheck that, and I can make this radius quite a bit smaller, even down to zero. 
That looks pretty cool. Now the bottom right radius I can make quite a bit bigger. So we can see I can play around quite a bit with my different options here and really get something that is completely custom. Now the great thing about this is my stroke automatically calculates. So if I want to make my stroke, let's say, a little bit smaller, it's going to be the exact same size throughout the entire document no matter how I change this document. I don't have to recalculate any of these other things. It does it all for me. All right, so you can see there are a ton of options within the rectangle tool, even the ability to add rounded corners. Now, let's go ahead and go to our next tool here. We're gonna skip over the rounded rectangle tool because we already have access to the rounded corners with the regular rec rectangle tool. So let's go to our ellipse tool. Now, when I'm creating an ellipse, I'm gonna click and drag. If I hold down the shift key, it's gonna keep it to a circle, okay? So now, if I want a perfect circle, I just hold down shift, let go, and there we go. We have a perfect circle. If I want a nice tall ellipse, I'm not holding down shift, and that's how we create our ellipse there. Now, keep in mind, just like with our rectangle, we can change this at any point in time. If I wanna click on this chain link, and I wanna make my height quite a bit taller, I can do that, and it's going to change at any point in time. Notice it's also kept the same settings from my rectangle, which is nice. We have a, a few different shapes using the same settings here. Okay, I can change my stroke options here. I want, let's see, we want some dots on my stroke now, and I wanna change this stroke to the outside. All right, and that's all within the ellipse tool. So if I create a couple more, look at that, we've got the same thing. Don't know when you would ever use that, but hey, it's pretty cool that it exists. There we go. All right, the next tool we're gonna show you is the polygon tool. And that's located right down here below the ellipse tool. There we go, polygon tool. Now you're gonna see we have pretty much all the same options. Fill color, stroke color, the stroke width, what type of stroke we've got, the width and the height, all these things. But we have a new option over here, which is the amount of sides. So we're gonna start off with three sides, which is triangle, and we're gonna bring this in. Now, I've got just a lot of control over like the angle that I want this to be at. If I hold down the shift key, it's going to limit me to certain angles, which is going to allow me to create a upright triangle or a triangle pointed to the right. Let's try that. Okay, there we can see, and it looks very similar to our other shapes because it's taking the same properties that we used on our other shapes. Let's go ahead and bring this up there. All right, and we've got another triangle. Cool, let's bring our sides up a little bit. Let's create a 10-sided object now. There we go and come out and down here to six or five, we'll create a pentagon. Let's hit delete, and there we have a very nice pentagon. All right, there we go. So here's our pentagon. Now, we have a couple options here with our shapes that are a little bit hidden. By default, you're gonna see you can change the amount of sides. Now, we're gonna click on this little gear icon, and we have a few more options. We have an option called smooth corners. So let's try five sides with smoothed, cor smoothed. That, smoothed is not a word, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna try five sides with smoothed corners. All right, and here we go. This is basically the exact same shape, only this time we have smoothed corners. Pretty cool. So you can do this on any, no matter what, how many sides you choose, you can always add smooth corners. All right, now let's go to our next option here. We're gonna change our sides again. We're gonna go with five we're gonna click on star. So this time, instead of having a pentagram, we have a five-sided star because it's just choosing the amount of sides that we want and it's saying instead of creating a straight line in between them, it's pulling it in and creating a star. All right, now we can also smooth the indents, which gives us something like this, more like a blammo, like an old Batman comic, like if you were to write pow or something in there. So we have these little star bursts as well. And you can add these up. If you want smooth corners and a star and smooth indents, then you get something like this. Now keep in mind, this is good for any amount of sides. So if I decide to bring my sides to eight, we have a really interesting variation on an octagon. All right, we can bring a couple in there. And this is a great way to create a pretty little flower in Photoshop. All right guys, so we've seen there's a ton of variation already within the shape tools in Photoshop, and we haven't even gotten into custom shapes yet. So let's go ahead and show you what you can do with custom shapes. All right, so to get to our custom shapes, we're gonna go right here to our shape tool and go all the way down to the bottom to the custom shape tool. All right, now here in our shapes, we're gonna click on this little dialog box here, and we do have some shapes that are preloaded with Photoshop, like a lightning bolt, 
That is incredibly scary. It's awesome. Now you have all the same options as well. If I wanna stroke that with a nice yellow and bring my stroke size up, you have all the same options that you had before. Now our shape, let's say we wanted some more shapes in here. It's like, uh, this is not gonna get the message across. Well, there are shapes built into Photoshop that you can add here. Just click on this little gear and I'm gonna go down to where it says banners and awards. There we go. It's gonna say replace the current shapes with banners and awards. You don't wanna hit okay because that's gonna remove all the shapes here and just give you banners and awards. I recommend clicking append. There we go. And now we have all these other fun banners and awards that are, who knew, built into Photoshop. If you wanna get a little, like a seal of approval thing like that, this is all built in to Photoshop. All right. Now, these custom shapes are great, and you can actually download custom shapes on sites like deviantart.com, but we're gonna show you how to create your own custom shape right now. All right, guys, now creating a custom shape is actually pretty easy. All Photoshop needs is a vector file. This can be something like type. Type is a vector, right? It's made up of mathematical formulas. You can also use any path from the pen tool. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna hit P for my pen tool, which creates a path. Now, we're gonna go ahead and click, we can make any path we want. We just make that into a custom shape if we want. It's not that interesting, but if that's what you wanted, then you could do that. I'm gonna create a little speech bubble, a little, uh, let's pretend that I'm a, a guy who writes comics um, and I wanna create my own speech bubble, unlike any other out there. So we're gonna create our own speech bubble here with our pen tool. Now, if you're not super familiar on how to use the pen tool, just click on your screen right now. We have some great episodes on how to use the pen tool so you can make the most out of your speech bubble uh, adventures, <laughs> whatever the right word is. All right, now I want this to look super custom, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like, there we go, make it look like kind of crappy and hand-drawn, but hey, let's just say that that's like the, that's the style of the comic I'm going for is crappy. There we go, that looks pretty good. So there's my speech bubble uh, for my crappy hand-drawn uh, speech bubble comic. And we're gonna go ahead and turn this into a custom shape. So I'm gonna hold down Control or Command, which is gonna bring my uh, pen tool into a little, uh, the direct selection tool, which looks like a white arrow. So that's just gonna turn this into a selection. So let's go ahead and make this active. That looks great. We're gonna go to Edit, and then down here to Define Custom Shape. All right, and we'll just call this Aaron Speech Bubble. There we go, cool. So now this speech bubble is stored inside of Photoshop. So how do we get it back out? How do we actually use the speech bubble? Well, just go to your shape tool here and I'm gonna go down to the custom shape tool. And then here in my shape, we're gonna go all the way down to the very end. And there we're gonna see, if I just hold my cursor over there, Aaron Speech Bubble. All right, let's click there. And now for the rest of the time that I use Photoshop, I've got this wonderfully crappy speech bubble. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give it a stroke. It's kind of funny. It, it's kind of funny in its crappiness. All right, we'll give it a nice stroke. There we go, that looks pretty good. All right, and we can create a ton of these. So if I wanna restrict the width and the height, just hold down your shift key, and that's gonna make sure it's the exact same as the original, or you can make tall, thin ones, or big fatties. Anyhow you wanna do it, we created the shape and now it's in Photoshop and it's ours to use forever and ever using all of the same features like fill and stroke, changing our width and height that we had for all of our other shape tools. And that's how we create custom shapes in Photoshop. Now there's one more cool exercise I wanna show you guys. We're gonna turn hair into a selection and then just load it up with shapes to make it look a little bit cooler. All right guys, let's go ahead and jump into our image. So I've got my illustration here that I've chosen and I wanna add quite a bit of detail to this hair. I just wanna make it a lot more interesting. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select out this hair first. I'm gonna to go to my magic wand tool and then we're just going to go ahead and click on this layer in the hair. And we can see it's turned it into a selection, which is perfect. Now I'm gonna create a new layer and group that layer with itself and then use this selection as a layer mask. There we go, so you can see we've got a new group with that layer mask and a layer inside of here. Now, the reason I did this is because I'm about to create a bunch of shapes and I want them to all only to be visible where this hair is. So for instance, if I put any layer inside of this group, it's only gonna be visible where the group is. I'm just drawing, drawing with a brush tool right now so you get the idea there. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and load up some shapes. So we're gonna start off here 
with our regular polygon tool. We're gonna have no stroke, there we go, and just fill, we're gonna use that color. So let's do a couple eight-sided things here. Now, I'm actually gonna change all these to be, wind up being the same color because I want that all, I, I want a lot of variation here in lightness, but I don't want any variation in color because we've got a lot of shapes in here and I wanna simplify it as much as I can. So I'm gonna go to my adjustment layers. We're gonna go to hue, saturation, okay? And then I'm gonna click on this colorize button. There we go, which is going to allow me to colorize everything here inside of that group the same color. All right, and it's again, it's limited by this layer mask, right? This layer mask is saying anything inside of this group is only gonna be visible right there. All right, well, let's go ahead and create a few more of these. We've got, let's take off all these options here and let's create some triangles, all right? And you know what? I want these triangles to be a little bit lighter in color. So there we go. We've got some triangles in the hair here. All right, let's make some hexagons. We'll make these a bit darker. All right. This is just kind of fun. And you can see these shapes like really add up very, very quickly. Let's add smooth corners, star, and smooth indents. There we go. That looks cool. And then let's bring our color right up to about there. All right. And let's knock this back down to a five-sided. We'll do some stars. That looks good. All right, I want a star like right up there, the head there. The head, put a star near the head. All right, there we go. And then we'll just bring in, we'll turn that star off and we'll bring in a couple more triangles. All right, and then you know what? I like that there was like a 10 sided thing that we did earlier with smooth corners, all that stuff. Let's go ahead and change the fill color. Now you can see the fill color is this green, right? But remember this hue saturation, that's what's changing all of it to the same. All right, that's what's saving it all to the same properties. All right, very cool. So basically I'm just using these as like graphic elements here to define like, okay, cool. These are all kinds of really interesting weird polygons that we pulled from the shape tool. And really without like pretty much any thought at all, we wound up creating a really cool image. And here within this hue saturation, I can go in and change the color really easily of everything at the same time because it's all being colored within that group, which is super cool. So just a really quick example of how you can use custom shapes to add a little bit more design elements to an illustration. All right guys, and that's how we create custom shapes in Photoshop. Just follow these key steps. I recommend starting off with the rectangle tool and the ellipse tool. Go ahead and get comfortable here. Choose your fill color and your stroke color and get an idea for how these are created. All right, now it's time to jump into your polygon tool. You can create triangles, hexagons, or you can get a little bit more complex. Showing how to smooth corners, add a star, and even smooth your indents for all kinds of really cool custom polygons. Now when it comes time to create your own custom shape, all you have to do is grab the pen tool. You can create any shape, go to edit, and done to define custom shape. And it's gonna be in your library, you can use this forever. And then to finish today's episode off, we just made a selection around the hair in this illustration, grabbed a bunch of different polygons and threw them in there to get a really nice abstract look for this illustration. Cool. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching Flurn. I really enjoy hanging out with you. I hope you enjoy hanging out with me as well. If you want to watch more Flurn, just click on that subscribe button on your screen right now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. Thanks so much, guys. We'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. Peace. <laughs> Done. Pretty cool, huh? That is all within the rounded rec. All right. Uh, what is this? A lip tool. Cool. This is what we do when we're done. This is the international symbol for done, in case you didn't know. Key, and that's going to make it that exact um, angle. <laughs> that looks like Zelda. All right, cool. All right, guys, so creating a custom shape is it's actually pretty easy. All right, so creating a custom... <laughs> All right. Ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> Whew, that was weird.